Well everyone, the boys are back in town. Welcome back to the Kyle Chips 2K Legacy Mode series featuring the Fordham Rams and Coach Carter. My new 360 came in yesterday. I put in my flash drive for my old console and I was absolutely shocked to see that all my old profiles transferred over without needing me to sign in. And that means all of my files transferred over as well. So we're picking up right where we left off with the Fordham Rams and it all worked out in the end. It's the best case scenario for this. Uh, since it's been like two or three weeks since the last episode, let's refresh our memories on where we're at here in Season 1. Right now, our main mission is to snap this losing streak. When we picked Fordham, we were all aware that there'd be some tough times, but even so, a 10-game losing streak isn't an easy pill to swallow, especially for Coach Carter who's become accustomed to rather quick success in high school and at UT Martin. Our schedule did get tough. We played a lot of the hottest teams in the A-10 back-to-back over the past couple episodes. And to be fair, on our record, we have been competing in most of these games. With 6 out of these 10 losses coming by 7 points or less, we just had some bad luck near the end of some of these games. So here in episode 8, our schedule finally starts to ease up a little bit. We head home against a struggling UMass team to open up this installment, and later on we'll be taking on Xavier, who's a pretty solid club. But this UMass game is actually surprisingly important for our postseason hopes. The Atlantic 10 takes 12 out of their 14 teams to their conference tournament. That's the beauty of college basketball. There's pretty much always something to play for. And Fordham will have to beat out the other two basement dwellers in the A-10, UMass and Rhode Island, to have a chance at postseason play. The Minutemen have a surprisingly effective offense for a team who's lost 6-7 to begin conference play. And that's almost entirely due to junior point guard Johnny Winbush, who is having a memorable third season. He's making an argument for being the best guard in the entire conference. And he also trot out big man Freddie Salazar, who has a nice touch from inside 15 feet, and big body wing Seth Dennehy, who can do a little bit of everything out there on the floor. Well guys, this is pretty much best case scenario, wasn't it? It all transferred over from my old 360 and ready to hop back in with more Fordham Rams Legacy Mode action. I appreciate you guys staying patient for the two and a half weeks that I couldn't post this series, but we're back and these Fordham guys, look at them chunning out of the tunnel, ready to snap this 10 game losing streak. We're 0-7 in the conference and UMass is 1-6, so probably not too many eyes watching this game, but it's all good. We don't care about all that noise. We're just doing this for ourselves at this point. And we can actually surprisingly open up a path for ourselves to the conference tournament if we take care of business against teams like UMass and Rhode Island to have that 12th seed be ours. So we're back. Freddie Salazar wins the tip for the UMass Minutemen, and we are back in action. Let's go, boys. So UMass scores the first possession, and our first possession back from our long hiatus will be a backdoor cut inside to Vashawn Pollard. Great feed there by Evangelo Higgins, and an even better screen by Cade Sorensen. So our 6'6 point guard is the first guy to record a basket as we are back from our break. So AJ Ali in the very next possession, he's going up against Akeem Finnegan, who is pretty undersized at that power forward position. So AJ Ali, our second leading scorer on this season should have a field day. We need to give him the ball in the post a lot. And here comes Johnny Winbush with a little Freddy handoff Salazar. to Freddie Salazar coming down the lane. There are the two top scorers for the UMass Minutemen linking up for a basket there as they take the lead. Johnny Winbush, 17 and a half points per game. That's third in the A-10 and he's also third in the A-10 in assists at 4.5. Freddie Salazar, 10 points, four rebound and one block a game on his sophomore campaign. Now this one Johnny swings over Winbush. to Johnny Winbush on the right flank and UMass opened things up a little bit. This was a big uh, calling card for us and not in a good way. We seem to always get out to bad starts especially on top of this losing streak. So that seems to be continuing this time around as this one is dumped down inside to Fabian Swanson as he and Stan Scott check in off the bench. Fabian Swanson, the former Juco transfer in his first season at D1 ball. He's having a very productive season off the bench. He's actually fourth in scoring at five and a half points per game. That one's off the mark from Stan Scott. Now it's the Vera Castle. Little handoff to Dearman, and this one is off the mark. UMass has been beating us in transition here in the first half, but we get back and stop this one as Higgins makes the extra feed to Stan Scott from the baseline. He doesn't mess up this opportunity. That's his second basket of the first half. Stan Scott was breaking out a little bit last episode. He didn't have a spot in the rotation, 
uh, to begin season one, he's actually averaging only five and a half minutes per game, but in his last six games, he's been averaging just over five points. That's fifth on the team. If he, that was throughout the entire season, one and a half rebounds and only nine minutes played. So very effective and efficient for Stan Scott as he tries to make the most of his playing time. And now here's Preston Murphy on the break. Now we're starting to get out in transition. It's 23 up. Now we're on a run of our own. So Seth Dennehy, the big body wing I told you about pregame. Little spin move. It's almost stolen by Nick Nystrom, our backup point guard. But then he can't close out on Johnny Winbush. He was out of position trying to provide help on Dennehy. So Winbush continues to slice and dice us, both with passing and scoring. As this one goes over to AJ Ali for three, it's short. He's actually made more threes on the season than you might expect. Rebound by Dupree Paulding. It is Seth Dennehy on the break, showing off his dribbling ability. It's kicked out to Johnny Winbush for another three. 11 points. He's the game's top scorer. And right when we were going on a run, <laughs> here comes the Minutemen. So they're back up by seven. As the minutes turn to seconds here in our first game back to action. This one swings inside to Dupree Balding. Nice move on Cade Sorensen for the opportunity at a three-point possession the hard way. Sorensen has had a pretty up and down junior year. He's actually leading the team in rebounds and blocks on the year. But he's also been very inefficient for a 6'8 center. And that was something we expected coming into our first season. Because last season, the first season without Coach Carter at the helm, Sorensen was also very uh, ineffective last year as well. He's averaging five and a half points as there's a nice screen to begin the second half of action. Evangelo Higgins, our top overall player, who's only a sophomore. Definitely got to build around. Great screen by A.J. Ali. But Sorensen on the season is shooting 38% from the field and 52% from the charity stripe. So definitely someone who needs to become more effective because on defense, there he is grabbing a rebound. He's pretty much all you can ask for if you're Coach Carter. Now we're starting to get out and run again. Inside to Higgins. Back out to Murphy as he relocates his body by behind the three-point stripe there comes Preston Murphy who began his sophomore year off the bench as uh, Fordham begins to go into their 1-2-1-1 one, one, one full court press that we've been seeing on and off from Coach Carter here in season one but Fordham can't close out on this possession but they do get the stop uh, when it's all said and done, nice bounce pass inside. Stan Scott absorbs the body contact, and he will put in two more. He's having a great day off the bench. Nine points for the junior out of the Bronx. So 47-42, 6 left to go. We're still in it. One thing you can say about Fordham is that we've been fighters all season long, but there's a nice pass by... Um, Reese Deerman, that's their starting two guard. Good heads-up play, seeing that Dupree Paulding had positioning on the inside. As it continues to be a game of runs, we're approaching six minutes left in this huge game for us, trying to snap this 10 game losing streak. And we're back down by seven as Fabian Swanson finds Stan Scott spotting up on the right flank. Book it for Scott. There's his second three on the game in three attempts. 12 points for Scott. And we're back down by four. UMass setting things up. We haven't been able to force turnovers with that 1 2 1 1 press. This one swings over to Reese Deerman. This one's blocked by Stan Scott. Actually, I think Fabian Swanson may have been the one who got a piece on it as this one's dumped down to AJ Ali. Beautiful up and under move on uh, Freddie Salazar. So now AJ Ali is also in double figures along with Stan Scott. 49 47 as we keep this lineup in the game. It's Nystrom, Murphy, AJ Ali, Fabian Swanson, and Stan Scott out there as the five on the floor for Fordham as Johnny Winbush up to 14 points. He's going to need just one more three to reach his season average. 442 left to go in the ballgame. Sticking with this unconventional five, but it's working. Great backdoor play. It's Swanson linking up with Scott for a second straight possession. 53 to 49 with four minutes to go. It's a four-point game. Nick Nystrom trying to beat Freddie Salsar off the dribble drive. It's Stan Scott who can't stay hot. That would have put him at 15, but here comes Johnny Winbush. But look at Stan Scott challenging him at the rim and then getting the rebound. Scott's been everywhere today. Today, and it's Preston Murphy looking for AJ Ali again inside it's blocked by Freddie Zalazar who is the team leader in block shots just over one per game for the 6'11 sophomore so checking back in is the starting five for the Minutemen with 3.33 left to go in the game clock. And check out this inbound play. Stan Scott with those broad shoulders sets a nice screen for Nick Nystrom, who works with the ball in his hands, and that'll leave open the inbounder. It's Fabian Swanson, the Juco transfer, who's displayed time and time again a very consistent jump shot at that power forward position, which is very valuable. 
and the most dangerous guy off an inbound play is the inbounder himself and UMass forgot about him so still a four point game it's Nick Nystrom who is open from three he's made a couple on his uh, senior year but that's this one's off the mark it's Dupree Paulding with another rebound and Johnny Winbush who's been dangerous all game we're trying to stay in front of him and if we don't get a stop here, we can basically kiss this opportunity goodbye to finally snap the losing streak. It's Seth Denny who almost gives it away, but it goes right into the hands of Akeem Finnegan. And then Johnny Winbush has a lane to ISO, and he kicks it out to Seth Dennehy, who gets both feet somehow behind the three-point line. It's now a seven-point Minutemen lead. It'll be Nick Nystrom, who gets the two quick points we need. It's AJ Ali once again, 12 points for the senior out of Rochester. And then this one is a errant pass trying to beat the press. It's Akeem Finnegan with a bad turnover there. And Freddie Zalazar will check back in and it will remain a four point game. So the Fordham Rams still hanging around. They've been doing this every single game. There's been points where it's gotten ugly, but points where they keep themselves within this game. And it's Deverick Castle, the two guard who will skate past Preston Murphy to open things back up again at six. Stan Scott running the break. He cashes in on two more. So Fordham continues to go quick, and they continue to beat this press, but they can't trade baskets. They need stops. They're still down four with an opportunity to at least make things interesting here down the stretch. 60 seconds left to go. It is Akeem Finnegan who completely fools Preston Murphy with that spin move inside. Now he's got 12 points. And at the end of the day, the Fordham Rams just could not get the stops they needed down the stretch. 62 to 56 is your final with Johnny Winbush continuing to display why everyone's starting to call him the best guard in the conference today. He's third in scoring in the A-10 at 17 and a half points per game. And he trails two big men, Albert McKenzie on St. Bonaventure and Denard Springer on Temple in points per game. So he's leading all guards in scoring. And of course, third in assists as well. AJ Ali led us with 13, at least the starting five, because Stan Scott had another breakout game. He had 16 more today, and he's someone I'm going to talk about definitely as the episode continues. Johnny Winbush with 14, as we saw three Minutemen in double figures. Set then he had 13, six and four, two steals and a block. I said pregame, he's someone that can provide a lot for a team on both sides of the floor and. Akeem Finnegan playing that small forward, power forward combo role, dropped 12 on us. So moving on to Xavier, we fall to 3-15 and 15 on the season, 0-8 within the conference. I think once we just get that first win out of the way, I think that'll do wonders for us moving forward. Xavier's been a very solid team. Uh, they've had a pretty easy schedule in the A-10. They haven't played a lot of the good teams yet. They haven't played Temple. They haven't played... Uh, st louis yet or charlotte but they are six and two they open up winning six out of their first eight games within the conference so at least they're beating the basement dwellers of the a10 they're led in scoring by avery nawankwo and lavelle quinn a pretty solid big man duo both guys from columbus ohio who combined for 24 points per game and eight rebounds per game but they do play very different styles of play nawankwo is more of your old school grinded out big man while lavelle quinn is a great athlete who can block shots and he can hit from 10 to 12 feet out consistently so we're back at home, we're spicing it up a little bit, wearing our nice maroon shreds at home, and Xavier wearing those basic but very nice uh, navy uniforms as they travel to the Bronx as we open things up with a contested three by Preston Murphy. He and Evangelo Higgins didn't do all that well last game as we try to turn things around for our two best guards on the season now we see Vishon Pollard who's been our best free throw shooter on the season and one of the best in the conference he's actually leading the conference in free throw percentage he's made 43 out of 48 on the year and then he grabs the steal not only is our best free throw shooter but he's also leading the team in steals per game over one steal a game and 89.5 percent from the line this one is also picked off by Kate Sorensen Xavier not looking all that ready for our press this is the first time all season long that we've seen the one two one one full court press uh, being run out of the gate by coach Carter now Kate Sorensen puts his shoulder into Wonkwo will kick it out to Preston Murphy no good but then he soars over into Wonkwo and the point guard Todd Pinkston for two more points it's a 13-4 run for Fordham 
and with a snap of the finger we are out and we are running and we are looking the best we have all season long but here comes Lavelle Quinn taking advantage of Fabian Swanson as he checks in along with Stan Scott and Nick Nystrom so nine and a half left to play here comes Xavier, who scored five unanswered, kicking it out to Preston Murphy. He's hit from that spot already. This one off the mark. Nwanko grabs his first rebound and then beating everybody up. The Tavon other side of the floor Crossin. is Tavon Crossan, a 6'3 senior guard who averages four points, two and a half rebounds, and two and a half assists. So another guy who can do a little bit of everything out on the floor. It's Pollard running the pick and pop. As Fordham continues to swing it around, everyone getting a touch on this possession. As the shot clock winds down, it's Higgins from the corner. Evangelo Higgins and Preston Murphy both struggled against UMass. Higgins was one of four and Murphy was three for 11. So they combined four for 15 shooting. We're going to need both of them to have better starts this time around if we're going to beat Xavier and snap this losing streak. And so far, so good for Higgins and Murphy. It's Pollard running the pick and roll. Nice bounce pass inside. It's Fabian Swanson who will have a chance at a three-point play, opening things up a little bit here for Fordham. This is the best half we've seen from Fordham probably since our first win on the entire season as it'll be a missed free throw from Fabian Swanson and then quickly up the other direction. It's Colson Kowalczyk, the 6'4 backup sophomore guard who only averages three points on the year. We well, can reach that season average with a, a free throw here and this one will rip through the net. And now Xavier, they just called timeout and I guess they wanted to set up a 2-2-1 full court press of their own, but they leave AJ Ollie with a free lane. Another three point play for the Fordham Rams and this time around AJ Ali would knock down the free throw. He's actually been very solid from the charity stripe. He's up above 80%, 81, I believe, since I last checked. So Ali gets a three-point play to drop, and then here comes Amir Holiday, who is a former D2 transfer from Oceanside, California. Pretty solid first season at D1 ball, four points and one assist, and only nine minutes played per game for Amir Holiday. Now this one goes inside once again as the half winds down. Fordham ends this half on a huge run. It was 24 to 18 at one point, and then Fordham surges there with a 12 to 2 run to go up by 15 at the break. This is definitely the best we've seen Fordham look all season long, and it's the best chance we're going to have to snap the losing streak. It's Preston Murphy, no good, but it's another offensive rebound ripped down by a Fordham Ram. We were actually beating Xavier on the glass at the break. We had 11 rebounds to the Musketeers 10, and that's something we haven't seen very much. Fordham, we need some rebounding and recruiting because we've been getting beat on the glass uh, most of these games that we've been losing. So we need a change in direction in that area. And here comes Scott Polite, who grabs a steal off of Vishon Pollard. We actually only had one turnover at the break. And Vashon Pollard had a really good first half. He forced three of those turnovers on Xavier. Three steals and four assists for our 6'6 point guard. He was a very underrated piece to our big surge there at the first half. This one is another inside-out play. It'll be Evangelo Higgins who gets the drop. I mean, when you're on, you have plays like that that go your way. Higgins with the friendly suitors touch. He's got 14, our top scorer, on the game with AJ Ali right behind him. So it's a 10-point Fordham lead. It's Colson Kowalczyk off the mark. Avery Nwankwo, who we haven't heard from much today. It's only points five and six for him on the glass. That's his first offensive rebound as well. And he beats Kate Sorensen this time around. As Sorensen was halfway to a double-double at the half, he had five points and five rebounds. You can pretty much pick out anybody on the starting five, and they contributed in some sort of fashion. So now here comes Stan Scott for three. It's short, but look at Sorensen soaring up. And then he will deliver a bounce pass, wrapping it around the freshman Hamilton for Xavier, number 43. Really nice wraparound pass by Kate Sorensen keeping his eyes up after he grabbed that rebound so now we're approaching five minutes to play xavier down by six it's lavelle quinn who kicks it out to kowal check for three that's xavier's first three on the entire game they were 0 for five up until this point but they finally cash in from behind the line they are one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the conference but you weren't expecting for them to go an entire half and a half from the uh, three-point line without one so Fordham still up by five, but we've seen this time and time again. Uh, Fordham not playing complete 30 minutes as Xavier begins their surge. It's Amir Holiday out there with the starters. 
And this one will swing over to Evangelo Higgins, who finds himself some pater from the right flank. And this one would probably be enough to seal our first win in 11 games. Finally, we come through to snap this losing streak. And what a feeling it is. Xavier looks completely out of it. Lavelle Quinn, look at him. He just looks disappointed. You could tell nobody wanted to be the team that gave Fordham their first win. I mean, whenever you're an A-10 rival, you don't want to be that first team that Fordham or whoever the team on their losing streak is to finally snap their streak. You don't want to be the team that to do it against. And Xavier is in danger of being that victim here tonight. If AJ Ali, who's made over 80% of his free throws on the year, could knock down two, we look pretty good here. Xavier made it close here at the end, but instead of rolling over, Fordham found a way to win like they should have done a couple times during this 11 game losing streak. As the senior from Rochester will knock down two for two, as AJ Ali, with probably his best performance on his senior year, comes through. And we finally snap the 11 game losing skid. And what a feeling it is. Look at Evangelo Higgins. He's got that smile on his face. He's thinking like, oh man, this shouldn't have taken this long. But I mean, hey, we got it done. And now we can look towards greener pastures. AJ Ali was our top performer today. 19 points, 6 of 10 from the floor. And a perfect 7 of 7 from the free throw line. 5 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 blocks, and 2 steals. AJ Ali could do no wrong tonight, and I think for us to be successful, we have to give him more looks. Ali should be our leading scorer. He was the leading scorer on the team last year. Even with the emergence of Murphy and Higgins, I would still like to see Ali have the most touches on the offense. Because whenever we work it inside and kick it back out, we did a lot today. That's when we look very scary. And Xavier played a lot of zone against us, and we made and we sliced and diced their zone all game long. Tavon Crossing. Led Xavier with 17 on the game as we finally end this losing skid and what a feeling it is. But episode 8 is not over quite yet. I'm going to have a recruiting update for you guys here at the end of the episode. And if you guys remember Coach Carter, in the first couple episodes of the series, he had some rotten luck throughout the in-season signing period, only scoring a commitment from one three-star guard named Dustin Black. So Coach Carter had to completely rework his recruiting board and with four seniors on the roster, including all three of our point guards on file, Carter added a batch of seven new players since the last recruiting update, giving him nine total targets on the season at this point. We're going to go through the top four targets today and the bottom four next episode, beginning with 5'11 junior college prospect Brandon Lovelace. Beyond the fact that this guy is a very marketable name for NIL deals, he's got skills to like. While Dustin Black, our only true signing to this point, is a point guard by trade he looks more of like a true two guard but lovelace looks more like a natural point man to me with an above average handle and an awesome ability to create his own shot the only issue is his priorities they don't entirely match up with fordham he wants to stay closer to home in north carolina and despite growing up minutes from unc's campus and being a tar heel fanatic he's not concerned with playing at a big time program so despite High Point and Virginia Military Institute being the other top two options for Lovelace, he won't care that Fordham is an A-10 school. He has no issue playing for a Big South Conference school, as I believe High Point and VMI are both Big South schools, I believe. Um, number two is Ryan Bridges, a 5'9 point guard from Michigan. He's ranked at the 36th spot in the class for, per position. As Bridges looks like more of like an old school player, a lot of bark in Bridges that makes up for his lack of size with defensive awareness, hustle, and block, and steal ratings that are all pretty high. He reminds me a lot of Roshan Martin back in the UT Martin series, an undersized yet tough as nails guard who can hit a shot when left open. We're trailing Marshall who's already stolen a recruit from us and another New York school in Niagara. Bridges wants to get some PT out of the gate. He wants to play for a bigger school and stay close to home, so the Rams definitely match up a lot better with Bridges' interests compared to Lovelace. The third prospect is a point guard who's been shooting up Coach Carter's board recently. Out of OKC, it's Marcus Neal. Neal actually had some high school stats to look at compared to the other two guys so far. He averaged eight points a night with a shooting slash of 48%, 45%, 82%. So very efficient for an AAU career, adding 2.5 assists as well in a senior year. 
Another standout ability from Neil is one you cannot teach. An A plus potential rating, the highest we'll see on the recruiting board this season. Neil is a very hard worker. He wants to get better and may have the highest ceiling on this entire board. He looks to be a really good finisher, an awesome athlete. Neil seems like a rare athlete who can live above the rim despite only standing at around 6'2". And once he becomes a more consistent shooter, he'll have a very good all-around skill set. He won't be a day one starter at the vacant point guard spot next year. His intangibles and outside shot and consistency are all kind of lacking. He wants to get good coaching, get playing time, and play at a bigger school. And that, along with his A-minus potential, tells me that Neil wants to become the best ball player he can be. Tulsa is jumping out to a big lead for Neil, but we still have plenty of time to catch up, and we'll need it because the ceiling for Marcus Neal is sky high. The final prospect today is the only one who remains from Coach Carter's board from the beginning of the season, a China-born big man by the name of Chen Li. It's hard to get a read on overseas recruits in this game, but B-plus rebounding for the 6-7 forward is a good start. And every overseas recruit we scored back at UT Martin, a la the Chris Fays and the Luke Lawtons, they became very productive players for Coach Carter. And despite those being very big shoes to feel, guys like Fay and Lawton, I think Chen Lee can be a productive player. And we need some rebounding help. And anything that Lee offers, along with that B-plus rebounding, will just be icing on the cake. Lee wants good coaching and wants to feel wanted. So that'll bring us to an end of the eighth episode of the Fordham College Hoops 2K Legacy Mode series. And it's great to be back, guys. I could not believe that everything had become unchanged. Whenever I got this new Xbox, I could just sign back in and all my files were still here. So no need to worry about the Fordham series going anywhere. We're back in action and we're going to continue to press forward for um, more wins, hopefully, and try to score one of the last seeds in the A-10 conference tournament. So if you enjoyed today, I hope you did. I appreciate you guys stopping by today and being patient while I figure out the insanity with my old 360, but we're back. Fordham's back, and the 2K Legacy Mode is back as well. So I appreciate you guys clicking on the video today and staying patient. And I'll be back very soon with more Fordham action along with the Road to NBA 2K22 with the playoffs right around the corner. Got a lot of cool stuff coming on the channel, and I hope you guys have a good night. Thanks for stopping by today. This is College Sports Revive signing out. Peace, everybody. Fordham is back.